Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome again to our Friday 15 minutes podcast. This is the close of the fifth week that we've been teaching on this subject titled The Psychology of Poverty. What the psychology of poverty is all about is a series of teaching that is looking at some scriptures that psychologically they kept people in poverty because people misinterpreted them. I will be looking mostly from Matthew chapter 6. And uh, we left off from Matthew 6, 29-30, contemporary English version. But I tell you that Solomon with all his wealth wasn't as well clothed as one of them. Okay. Now, I started on Wednesday by asking a question. Where is Solomon? Heaven or hell? Of course, Solomon is in heaven. Because Solomon is in hell, Jesus wouldn't use Solomon as a reference for prosperity to us if Solomon has gone to hell because of his money. So if Solomon is in hell right now, it's not money that took him there. It's a different thing. And I said to us, many people said to us, the rich man goes to hell and poor people go to heaven because of the story we read in Mark 10, 17, 20, because Jesus Christ asked the rich man, to follow to sell what he has and follow him and the bible said that the rich man couldn't follow jesus because he had great possessions and i said no great possession actually had him and jesus knew that was where his problem was so jesus was telling him to do away with his riches for as long as he has his riches he will not be able to have a grip on the kingdom of god and i said to us what he said to that man does not apply to me because listen to me, he was a rich man. If you are a poor man, what are you selling to make heaven? So, it does not apply to you. And I said to us that it's, it's, it's an individual thing. It's an individual thing. Now, to further prove that, to further prove that, if you look at uh, John 3, in uh, John 3, 1 to 2, the Bible said there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, the ruler of the Jews. The, uh, and the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher came from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God will be with him. The same goes for uh, now. When you look at that John, that John 3, something, Jesus never told the, the Pharisee man to sell his property and be saved. Because it has nothing to do with that. Now look at uh, John 19, 38. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, he was a disciple of Jesus. But secretly, for fear of the Jews, he saw Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. Now, look at these two individuals. Uh, Joseph of Arimathea was a very rich man. But he was a secret disciple. Uh, what do you call uh, 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 Nicodemus was also wanted to be saved, came to Jesus by night. By night. So when these two came to Jesus, you discover what was a hindrance in their own life is different from what was a hindrance in the rich man. The rich, the, the young rich ruler came to Jesus in the daylight. He came to Jesus in the daylight, in the broad light. But when, uh, what do you call Nicodemus came to Jesus, he came in the night. He came in night. Uh, what do you call it? Joseph of Arimathea was a secret disciple of Jesus. So if Joseph of Arimathea would have probably come to Jesus, Jesus would have told him to meet him in the open space so that he can answer him in the public place. That is the way he will be able to keep his salvation. That's the way he would have been able to keep his salvation. So you see, so, so, so it's a different stroke for different folks. So what Jesus told uh, Nicodemus, sorry, they told the young ritual, ritual that is not in the standard scriptural way of being saved. It's not. And um, if you read Ephesians 2 8 to 9, way more translation, he said, For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. It's not through your riches. What saved us is grace, and it took our faith. And that not of yourself. It's not of yourself. It is God's gift, 
and is not on the ground of merit so that it may be impossible for anyone to boast oh wow Ephesians 2 8 to 9 now that is how to be saved so if the young rich ruler has sold his property and then God said then he has something to boast of then he has something to boast of he would have boasted that yes he, he earned his salvation he earned his salvation but do you know what he couldn't have said so because thank God Jesus was actually pointing to him the challenge is going to have a life to be saved the challenge Joseph and Matthias have in life to be saved is that he cannot come to Jesus in the broad life that the young rich ruler the problem the Nicodemus have is religion because he was a religious man he has preached against Jesus in the, in the open so for him to accept Jesus in the open they will see him as an hypocrite so he came to Jesus in the night so hypocrisy is his problem so if Nicodemus was to be saved he will need to be away with his religion but do you know what some of us it might be our family your parents have so much grip on your life and because of that you can't be saved I've met people like that they want to be saved but they're afraid of what their father or what their mother will do my father will kill me my mother will kill me so they can't decide for Christ some people it is women some people it is drink some people it is their it is their it is their contemporaries but the real thing that saved all of us has nothing to do with our riches or no riches what saved us is what we read in Ephesians 2 8 to 9 for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith it is by grace and that not of yourselves no 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 salvation it is God's gift and it's not on the ground of merit nobody merited it hallelujah nobody merited it so let nobody tell you that rich men go to hell and poor people go to go to heaven no 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 it has nothing to do with riches you can be rich and go to heaven you can be rich and go to hell you can be poor and go to heaven and you can be poor and go to hell but do you know what more people more poor people have confidence in money more than rich people do now that will surprise you but that is absolute truth that's absolute truth that's absolute truth that's absolute truth more poor people we go to hell more than rich people do listen to me many people many poor people today will not serve God because they felt that they need to work very hard to make money so all their lifetime they use it in serving money many poor people tell lies today so that they can get money many poor people steal today so that they can get money their confidence is more in money than their confidence is in God it's a lot better for many rich men it's a lot better for many rich men so so heaven I believe that's my own belief so you are free to have your own belief too I believe that we see more rich men in heaven than we see poor people in fact there are many poor people today who cause God who cause God more than rich people you know why because they believe that the reason why they are poor today is because God made them poor <laughs> it's because God made them poor God didn't make you poor your lack of wisdom your lack of knowledge and many things they have taught you in life has probably kept you in poverty and that's what I'm teaching on psychology of psychology of poverty more poor people trust in riches than rich, than rich people rich people give us more money to do gospel than poor people do 
Uh, Reverend David, you know, poor people are poor, they can't actually have one. That is not true. In the Bible, we read about a poor woman. And not just a woman myself, a poor widow. See, today, many, many people do that. People say, okay, let me give you my widow's mind. Did you see that? My widow's mind. Where did they get it from? From a widow. Who gave her mind? And the Bible said that she gave all her living out of her words. Out of her words. Out of her words. And God gave her attention. So you see, it is not, it is not the money that got God's attention is the heart. Because listen, what she gave was a might, which make a fadden. That fadden cannot buy a block in the building. And yet, she got more attention than the rich people who gave plenty, but they gave out of their abundance. But she gave out of her need and out of her wants out of her world and she gave all her living and God gave her attention so what God is looking at is not what you gave what God is looking at is your heart so most poor people don't give from their heart they give out of their complaint and you see if you give out of complaint you, you are not giving you are not giving and that's why many people today they will give they say you see I'm giving my widow's mind it's actually, actually out of complaint whether you are a widow, you are not a widow. That's not the basis. What is in your heart? So more poor people will likely go to hell because of money. What money will make many poor people to do? We land them in hell. We land them in hell. So more there are there are there are many rich men that are committed to God. And they are using their money to serve God. They are using their money to serve God. If most of these rich men don't give us money today and we have to depend on the poor in the church, we'll have closed down the church. We'll have closed down the church. So it is not true that the rich men will go to hell and poor people will go to heaven. No, it has nothing to do with your money. It has, money, it has something to do whether you are giving your heart to Jesus or you are giving your heart to money. So, thank you so much for listening to me. I'm out of time right now. And I'll see you again in our Monday 15 minutes podcast when we'll be entering the sixth week on this our teaching on psychology of poverty. From here, I want to tell you that Jesus Christ is Lord. I will see you in our Monday 15 minutes podcast.